Okay, uh, welcome everyone to our October 7th East Ridge Planning Commission meeting. Uh, we've got a couple items on the agenda tonight. Before we get started, it was brought to my attention that there was an item that was supposed to be on the agenda tonight but got canceled. So if you're here for 1506 Madonna, that item will not be on the agenda tonight. Um, and I was told that it will be reposted and re-advertised in letters that will go back out again. So again, 1506 McDonald is canceled for tonight's agenda. Uh, before we get into new business here, we'll go ahead and go over the approval of the minutes for our September 11th meeting. And if, if nobody has anything to add, we'll, I'll entertain a motion to approve those minutes. So moved. So moved. Okay, we got it. Got a move, uh, motion to approve. Second. And a second. Now go call, please. You threw me off there. <laughs> Vice Chairperson Rinker? Yes. Mission Member Miller? Abstain. I wasn't present at that meeting. Mission Member Spence? Yes. Mission Member Tuggle? Yes. Chairperson Johnson? Yes. <clears throat> okay, the, uh, First item on the agenda tonight is going to be in regards to the address at 1018 and 1022 Leclerc, Leclerc Drive. And so to consider the request of James Hathcock to have the property rezoned from C2 Commercial District and R1 Residential District to RZ10 Lot Line Residential District and RT1 Residential Townhome District. That's correct, Mr. Johnson. This is case number 2019-0129 from RPA. Uh, currently, it's zone C2 and uh, portions of the zone R1 as well. We wanted to rezone the RC1 and RT1 and keep a portion of the remaining as C2 for some commercial build out. Uh, this is kind of similar to the adjacent Blackhawk Commons that's recently been approved. Uh, this build out would consist of 12 0 lot line homes along with four town homes. Uh, I believe that commercial use is scheduled for like 4,800 square feet. Uh, the only concern RPA had with this, RPA had with it, is the dwelling density is going to be up on the rise a little bit, which may increase traffic and some storm water runoff. Thank you, Mr. Allen. You're welcome. Okay, uh, I guess if the applicant, who's representing the applicant, can come down here to the microphone and tell us about it. Joseph Ingram, Ingram Gore and Associates. Um, so, so the, the, the application is, is, you know, obviously, you know, we did Blackout Commons across the, across the street. And it's really similar in that we're trying to we gotta get rid of the C2 because we can't put any kind of residential in the C2. So we're going to cut out some of the C2. And then we're, we're proposing that. We're supposed to do single family residences that would legally front on the clerk, but we wouldn't access off the clerk since the clerk is not a, kind of the standard, so we can build our own internal drive with access. Hey, Joseph. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, could you state your name again for the record? I don't think Chad got it. Sorry to interrupt you. He doesn't know me by now. Joseph Ingram, Ingram Gore, and Associates. And I'm I've got some people in the back raising their hand. I will be opening up a public hearing tonight. Well, I was just wondering if we could have a copy for us to look at so we understand what you say. Yeah, we're all against it. Well, if you want to come up here and sit at the front, maybe that'll help you. I don't think we have extra copies for you. And, you know, actually, I, 
my issue is just for the level problems. Hi, hey, Joseph. Did, did you say this is going to be something very similar to Prairie Hill, if you said that? Yeah, as a matter of fact, it's going to be almost identical to Black Hawk Commons. That's why you know, we, we kind of came right behind them. It's the same thing that Evans did across the street. Perry Village that you brought on at home. Yeah. Yo, okay. Yeah. Very nice up Very nice home. Yes. I, I drive through there. Yes. Uh, all, all the owners are, they, so far they've been taking really good care of it. So Perry Village is done. Yeah. 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 The last house is like Perry Village. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
years about the traffic situation with Eastridge, but the population of Eastridge has been 22,000 people since 1960. I think the increase in traffic comes from the other 500,000 people who live in this area. Using this as a convenient cut through, I don't see 12 houses the, adding the short, the short, the short, the short the traffic the problem from Eastridge. Right, in 16, 30, 70, still not nearly as many as people live here. We've had static 22,000 people since 1960. I hate the traffic in East Ridge. It's not people who live in East Ridge creating the traffic. It's true. How do you say that? How do you know that? Census, oh. census records. No, I mean, how do you know that it's not the people in East Ridge causing the traffic? You, you don't know the people. But we're not going to get in the dialogue right here. I'll have everyone, I'll have the chance for everyone to come up here during a public hearing. Just go, just be, because when you talk and you say things, it's for the record, and if you're not up here on the microphone, it doesn't go on record. Um, so at this time, does anybody else have any other questions for Joseph? Uh, if not, I will, Joseph, you, you want to hang out up here? Yeah. Probably, yeah, that's fine, that's good. So at this time, I'm gonna open a public hearing. I'm probably gonna start start from the left and try to wave my way to the right. I don't have a check, a sign-in sheet up here, so what I'll do is just, like I said, I'll start from the left and move my way to, move my, make my way to the right. Uh, if you'll come down to the microphone, uh, state your name and your address for the record, and we ask that you please keep it at around about a three minute time frame so everyone will have a chance to speak. So uh, at this time, I'll go ahead and open up the public hearing. So we'll start over here. If you want to come down to the microphone, raise your hand. Okay, no one, does anyone here, does anyone here want to come down to speak up for or against this rezoning? Yeah. Sir? Yes. Okay. You'll state your name and address for the record, please. I'm James Collins, 3276 Blackhawk Trail, right across from the clerk. I've been there 50 years uh, on Blackhawk Trail. Uh, my children all graduated from East Ridge High School. Uh, my grandchildren graduated from East Ridge High School. I've seen, like all of us, seen some great changes here. Uh, at one time, uh, the most desired place in the county people will live. Everyone will live in. And so, you know what that did? That kept your property values up. Now, you're all aware of how much rental property we have in Chattanooga right now. And uh, uh, my concern is, is what was brought up by this commissioner, is that you can live in a nice place, but if you don't own that place, you don't have a tendency to take care of that place. Now, uh, you can look at Leclerc now you guys haven't been up through there. I had to, I, uh, a guy that does my taxes on me is over your streets here in Chattanooga, normal. And I, uh, I had asked a favor of him. I've lived there for 50 years. My, my Blackhawk Trail was like a goat trail uh, for years up through there. He finally uh, spoke to someone, probably you guys, that got that street paid. But I noticed as soon as these people wanted to, wanted to develop this area up here, they got the cart paved in there just immediately. We have no gas on that uh, on Blackhawk Trail because there aren't enough people that want to apply for it. But I am uh, I'm, I'm concerned about the density problem also. Uh, Blackhawk Trail, you guys know, is just barely a two lane coming off the hill there. And just in the last two or three years, and I have a great granddaughter living with me now that's four years old, so I can't let her anywhere close to Blackhawk Trail now because of the people that are coming up down here. We finally got a yield sign there after a few years. But you know, I, I don't know who was responsible for taking that traffic light out there at uh, Ringo Road and Blackhawk Trail years ago. We had a traffic light there for years. You can get in and out, like uh, uh, Ronnie says now. You can't you can, you can't get in and out of the street. I'm retired, so I, I you know I, I'm about to, I don't have to be at work here anymore. People that do uh, it is pretty rough. And I, I'm concerned about the density problem there. My sister is in the real estate business, and the comps in our area, just within a six block, not just on Blackhawk Trail, 
have really, uh, someone made a statement that the, the real estate values were going up in the street, are they? Yes. I, I'm glad to hear that, but I didn't know that. Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. But there again, my only concern is, is uh, I, have, I have nothing against people that have to rent. I don't have a problem. A lot of people have to do that. I did that when my wife and I first got married. But I've, I've noticed in our area up here around Black Hawk Trail, the renters don't seem to take care of their property. And McClurk is a prime example of that. that that's been an eyesore right there for years. That There's uh, commodes, there's old sea vans, there's all kinds of stuff that was put in that vacant piece of property for years. And the owner uh, just didn't care. He didn't take care of it. So anyway, anyway, those are some of the concerns I have about that. The traffic, I've probably gone over three minutes. But, well, thank you, thank you for your time on that. Is anyone else? Yeah. My name is Earl Wilson. I live at 2019 Pioneer Ridge Trail. Uh, my thoughts after hearing this and listening to that. We don't even know what the price of the units is going to be, and that's a significant factor as to who would be buying into these properties. Two, I'd like to see us require a hydrology study, a traffic study, and then an individual determine what price he's going to put on these units before we move any further with this discussion. Uh, that might answer a lot of the concerns and issues that people have. You know, I can remember when the traffic light was there, when Buck's restaurant was on that corner. Uh, we've seen a lot of change, and we do need growth on that end of the stretch. But, you know, like Mr. Miller said, you know, there's a lot of difference between people who own the property and people who rent. We are seeing a generational shift where millennials, Generation Zs, do not want to own property, they want to rent. And I have two of those. Um, one of them owns a property home, the other doesn't. But with that being said, there is a difference in person having being committed or being dedicated to the piece of property they own. And, uh, you know, I would like to see units like they're developing like this come because I'm at a point where I'm getting where I don't physically want to be able to take care of a property or my body's telling me I can't. And units like this, uh, I'm interested in because I don't want to live anywhere else. I could live anywhere in this country I wanted to, but I choose East Ridge because it's the best community within 100 miles of where we're standing right at this moment. And I will change my mind on that. So just let's have more facts before we go making any decisions to change the zone so that we can do it, do it right the first time. You know, our, our coast department's overwhelmed. We've been fighting the properties cleaned up, and we'll take one step forward, three back. You know, uh, Council Member Johnson, you and I have had discussions about Leclerc and Black Hawk and some of the properties up there. And we've got nowhere in cleaning them up. And I'd like to see it cleaned up, but I don't want to do it, you know, at the price of the sacrifice of everybody else in the city. The traffic, like you said, it's not over these ridge residents causing the problem, but we're the ones that pay the price for those people shortcutting through from Georgia and things like that. My wife's a school patrol officer. She almost gets run over every day on John Ross Road because of the people coming from Georgia running 60 miles an hour talking on their cell phone. We need to do due diligence before we move forward on this. So I asked you guys to table this, get more information, more facts, and then let's look at maybe having the builder and the architect and things like that. Do a little uh, meeting with the individuals that live up there, like we've done with other things in the past. That seems to help alleviate anxieties and fears and problems of things we've run across in the past. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Wilson. Do we have any projection, Joseph? Do we have any projection on what the houses will, the target price for sales? I mean, I know we don't know exactly, that's not your decision, but we know an estimate of construction cost might tell us it's not ideal. Is that or is the answer? Oh, there we go. We have the answer, man. Yeah, James has a lot of on this. Um, I know most of the houses go for around 110 to all the way to 300,000 over East Ridge. I mean, that's where I've been looking up online. And I don't want them to overprice, way overpriced, and I don't want to undervalue, you know what I mean? I want to make it to where people can afford it, but also your property is going to go up and hopefully make y'all some money in the long run. But I'm 
McLennan can on around 230 to 250,000. Well, at $135 a foot, you're talking 225 So I don't think anybody's going to put $230,000 in a house and not take care of it. I, 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 I want to make it to where I charge enough money for it to where, I mean, I can always come down on it. I want to ask for enough money to where if they're serious about buying it, I don't want to sell it to just Joe Blow off the road that's not going to take care of it. I'm going to do like I do with my renters that I have downtown. I'm going to say, if you want to take care of the house, I want you to have the house. I mean, I don't, they are not going to be for rent. I want to get out of the rental business. I want to sell it. And but I'll do respect. You have nothing to say about what goes rental. Well, not after I sell them. That's exactly right. The only thing that's going to cure that is to have some form of reminder plan the homeowners association agreement that's part of the sale of the property, monitored by the city, and the document approved by the city. That's fine. I think he, I he said he wants to get out of the rental business because he, he, owns, he owns the two yeah. duplexes. I, I see other just the other reason is that, remember, Mrs. Hancock said I have a business over there, so she can't have her interior design. We don't know that we're absolutely positive and sure. Uh, for what? That she's going to put her office there? Sure. I'm mean, positive and sure. I know she wants to. That's why we're keeping You just said the word wants to. Well, she wants to. As soon as we get the money, we're going to do it. And, but I want to bring back each My grandfather used to own East Ridge Bakery at Road. I want to bring that back. I want to put East Ridge Bakery back right there. I just want to make sure that what is developed there is, is going to be an asset. Immediately, but you know, to that neighborhood. Uh, I know the, the uh, condo or townhouse developments over there off the Frawley Road, they're all sold out. Okay. And they were about 179, 9, or 180, and the 40 additional ones that they built over the past year, so they're all sold. Yeah. And I haven't had any, I haven't heard any problems from those developments. Those are the you know, but I know some of them are not. I'll, I'll put it in the contract that. They can't do rentals. I want can't, them. You can't do that. Well, it's not an major. HOA. You can do yeah. the HOA <laughs> is one of the HOA. HOA. Yeah. I, that, I, yeah. I'll do everything I can to keep that out. I just want to go put these in, make some put some money in my pocket, make y'all some money, make them some money. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think it's going to put the head of much of an improvement to that area. I know that, that do place looks really bad. Yeah, we got pictures. I mean, I've been trying to, we've been trying to get something done with this property for years now. I know we tried probably, I, I can't for 13 years to say, hey, you know, this is not a, a positive improvement to the area. So that's just my opinion. And the traffic flow, it's going to be less traffic than if I go through and put all the businesses along. I mean, it's going to be far more traffic all day long. And also, how many lots of record are there total? 11. There's 11. So he can build 11 houses there now if he wants to. This is 12, 12. Okay, what, what I'm saying is, he's saying right but, now. But right now, right now, as the property sits right now, he doesn't need to have it rezoned. He doesn't have to have, he, 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 can, he can build 11 houses right there and have the driveways coming out of the clerk right now. He don't even need us. But what he's wanting to do now is change some things up, put, Rezone it to the, the RT1 and the RZ and put, put the entrances coming off of Blackhawk, which obviously will also help. I don't want traffic coming around this way. But the cars can't pass all the park anyway, so. No, I mean, that's what I'm trying to take this right. out. I don't want y'all to have to deal with that. I know well, how you much of a hassle. Well, you couldn't deal with it because two cars can't pass on it. Yeah, I mean, that's why I'm trying to put everything that come in right here. It's right. going to be 24 to 30 foot wide right here. And it's going to go all the way up to between our houses. The water runoff, that won't have to worry about it down here. I'm going to put our retention line right here. So now we have it down the trees around it. The townhomes are going to be right on the front. All the parking is going to be on the back side. So y'all won't get to see it. The so wood pipes are up on top. All the water, you go and get rid of them. Not right now. Uh, that's my next step. After I get this done, and after I make some money on this one, I'll have the money to hopefully go and do something with those.
close the public hearing. Is there anyone here that would like to come down to the microphone to speak in favor? Uh, okay. Well, let this gentleman you can speak either in favor or against the rezoning of this property. State your name, please, and your address. Steve Parker, I live at 1026 Cleanwood Road. And uh, talking about the, the Black Hawk is worse than the other street as far as you come around Blackhawk or whatever, you, you almost have to stop at both cars just to ease by each other. That's how narrow that street is. Uh, it's when you get down there where it uh, comes into to, to Ringo Road, it's wider down there. But uh, about a third of Blackhawk is so narrow that you, you can't pass and be comfortable with another car or whatever. That's how narrow it is. And that's, that's the area that they want to come out on right there, too. So, it will be a mess of it. On top of that, we just don't want the definitely middle, uh, middle property in our subdivision. Uh, we'll have an apartment that's two stories high. And I know that y'all put limitations on, so if somebody has an outbuilding, you have limitations on, on how high it can go. Uh, and it's not two stories like these Big builders are going to be. Yeah, so right, so right now he's wanting to remove two rental properties. So one's a duplex, one's a single family home there, and he's renting them out now. So right now we're getting rid of the two rental properties and adding uh, additional single family homes for sale. Well, so that. Well, we know for a fact that rental property breeds properties. That's fine. Right. Okay. Well, we don't have any questions. Thank you, sir. Everybody wants to progress, you know. And uh, 
like something nice in your neighborhood. And what I, I think if, if you spec them out, you know, you're going to put the full mic and cap on top of them. I'm going to make sure I don't use rent. I don't use, I mean, even my rent is downtown. I don't use rent. I use things that last. I'm going to make sure they can't be ran down in a matter of a year and a half or two years. You know, I want them to look good. That property's been my family's name for ever since. I think it's very better once if you want to build it. So, uh, 230,000 by about 1,700 is 135 square foot. Yeah. So, there you go. Is there anyone else? Yeah. Okay. Well, the, Mr. Hathcock, if you don't mind standing there, why not? We'll get somewhere. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. My name is Randy Martins. I live at 1033 Lepert Drive. And my concern is the sewer. I have sewer already. That's the main house. sewer line running down through there for all the houses up above. It's already ran directly right. Okay, so it's going to affect us because I was okay. over ran out the street in 1998. Here, um, yeah, they're a little bit. Okay. They're coming down the, down the hillside. Okay. I've got that main sewer line running straight. Okay, and then two here on the clerk. Mr. Hathcock, can you talk in the uh, microphone, please? Uh, sorry. We're just trying to look over. East Ridge came through, put a bunch of gravel down for the water runoff. And you're going to plant here. Are you going to fill this valley in? I'm where all the water goes? Around right here, I'm going to have to take out a lot of dirt and make this flat. I'm talking about like right here on the floor where they put that. So you're going to raise that? I'm going to try to put all the dirt I take out of here over here. All the dirt, when I level it out, I'm going to try my best to get the bulldoze it down this way. Okay. Try to well, level it out. That way the water run off. We're a little concerned maybe with the water run off. Well, that retention pond right there, everything, I put it right all there, that. everything is running straight to actually that pond. Right there. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. What we're looking at tonight is the site plan. They still need to file their improvement construction plans, and the retention pond has got to be sized correctly to be able to the water runoff. That's got to be signed off by a registered professional engineer. So this is when you see the pond, it may be maybe need to be larger, or maybe smaller. It all depends. But they this is just a site plan right now that we're looking at. There's a lot more due diligence that's involved before he gets the permits. And I know Mr. Tuckle he says it much better than I do. We're we're here to dis decide if this is uh, that this property is suitable for the zoning. Uh, and, and not here to decide if the engineers are going to do their job. Okay. So, um, does anyone else? Sir? Your mic's not on. Red light's on. No. I can hear you. No. Okay. Marjorie Curlix, 32 35, Marjorie Trail. I just want to make it known on Blackhawk. Martin Trail and Blackhawk to Ringo Road. Over the years that we've lived there, I've had WWTA out there three times. Where'd they go? Man of the cover. It was bubbling up what was coming underneath. On one occasion, they replaced, <coughs> they not replaced, they said they put a line in the system on Ringo Road. On the other two occasions, there was some type of good system that was in the uh, sewer line and was back in the day. <coughs> I have a man on cover right in front of my house. Thank goodness I hadn't gotten to that one, but they wanted the product to, to there. And with the number of units from me, that's got to be considered. Will they handle all the sewer line? 
Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else? At this time, I'm going to close this public hearing. We got one more. Okay.
does anyone else have any other questions for Mr. Hathcock or Joseph or Mr. Hathcock? I see none. I can't even see. Okay. Uh, I understand a motion in regards to the rezoning. Motion to approve and pass along to City Council. Got a motion to approve and to pass this to City Council for final approval. Do I have a second? Uh, they're, 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 
So you have it, it's in every zone because of the, because there's a common area now and everything because of detention bonds. And so we have common parking areas, stuff like that. So there, every zone has, a, has an HOA now in Chattanooga, everything has. So, so I mean, I don't know how you do it, but it, it would be, and uh, obviously, I mean, but it's, uh, it's a legal document. I know it is. Yeah, so I mean, I mean it's. And have it have that approved by the city and yeah. city council yeah. on approval of the. Yeah, it'd be something that we would come back, we'd come out here and you'd be so we can so, here. Just hold you to it. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that's, that wouldn't be extraordinary. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Joseph. Mr. Miller, did you want to make a motion or did try to keep it as clean? <laughs> He's pointing at me. I'd like to make a motion that we approve this with the contingency that the homeowners association is included in the plans of this subdivision and would include a covenant that the owners of these properties will not rent them or sublease them, that they will own them and sell them. You can't do that. Can't do that. Yeah. That's not legal. You can't govern ownership. Okay. I learned that through the court system. Want to make a motion? I'll get to it. <laughs> All right. I make a motion to approve the development. Uh, I'd like to say an upscale development. Uh, I don't know if I can do that or not, but upscale. Yeah. I, I, I know. I, 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 I strongly, su strongly suggest an upscale development. But I would like to see a homeowners association agreement tied to each individual plaque or so it looks Chattanooga that would uh, establish guidelines on which to keep the property up there. That would be my motion. I would second that motion. Okay, so just to be clear, we got a motion to approve with the contingency of there being an adequate HOA formed and attached to the deeds in the plaque. Owned, I don't know why. 
uh, at one time or another they were zoned R1. And uh, I was told that, I think the RPA told me, that if I didn't get it uh, zoned for apartments, R3, that first of all it's grandfathered in the way it is, but if one of the buildings burned and it, if it stayed R1 like it was, I wouldn't be able to rebuild one of the apartment buildings. And there's three apartment buildings on this property. It's 24 apartments is what it is. And, uh, and so what I'm trying to do is get it zoned for apartments. You know, for, uh, I don't, like I say, I don't know the history why it got to be R1, but bottom line is their apartments in another VR3, my understanding is, you know, to just, and for, I, it's just for the reason that that uh, if I had one of the buildings burned down, I don't want to have a problem rebuilding it, that kind of thing. So that's that part. Of it. I've got two things going on, but that's that part right there. Uh, buildings that are already there now. On the other side of the street, uh, I don't know how much you guys know about the other side of the street, but the other side of the street. Um, there was a big church there, and it was there for years and years and years. And uh, at one time, it was very vibrant, had a, had a, uh, a lot of members, and, and apparently over the years, the membership dwindled, and they were unable to keep the place in good shape. And so um, I know the city was after them. Uh, to do something about it, either fix it up or demolish it. And, and it was in bad shape, there's no doubt about it. It had a tarp over the roof and the, and the, uh, uh, the, the paint was peeling off, you know, and, and uh, it was in bad shape and, and they just had like 10 or 11 members. Uh, and uh, most of them were the choir members. And uh, they just didn't have enough income to keep the place up. And so, um, and they owned another building that was at the end of the street. They owned practically that whole side of the street up until where, to where the old Kentucky Fried Chicken used to be in that Sabachi restaurant. And so uh, I bought uh, the, the first part, and it's a dead end street, as you all know. It's a dead end street. It's, a, it's not a big wide street. It's a, kind of a narrow street, and it's dead end. And, uh, uh, there was an old, I think they call it a YMCA building at one time that was not being used and it was in terrible shape. And so the city was was asking them about that. Also, I think a tree had fallen in, into the roof of it and it was in bad shape. And at one time, um, I happened to know that there was a house built uh, uh, between the church and this old YMCA building. There was a house built there. And the house, uh, I'm not sure, I think that the church had a member living there or something. I don't know who, who was living there, but, but the house got in terrible shape also. Uh, really, really bad shape. And some, some time or another, it got demolished. It, it, it weakened in it and had to remove And so I'm guessing that during that time, or around that time was when that area, that the piece of property got zoned R1 when that house was there. I, I believe that was one of those 1980 blanket rezones and it was a slot or a go road and this was incorporated into it. It was. Okay. And so uh, when I looked at it at the RPA paper, it showed that um, the, the part of Rebecca Drive towards the dead end where my apartments are, uh, it is on, on both sides of the streets, R1. And when you get up there closer uh, to Ringo Road, the zoning changes to C2. And when the, when the church was still there, the zoning line that divided R1 and C2 went through the building, went through the church building. Now, uh, when I bought that from the church, um, I decided that it was in such terrible shape, I, I didn't really want to try to keep it up or, or, or fix it. So I decided to have it demolished. And so, uh, and indeed there was, there was asbestos in there and, and 
so it costs more to do, but I've got it, I've got the whole thing demolished. Uh, and so that line that went through the church building doesn't really matter anymore because there's no church building there anymore. It's just a vacant lot now. And so uh, that the part I'm looking at is not the part that is on the, the part that's zoned C2. I'm looking at the part that's closer to the dead end that's right across the street from my apartments that I have to try to get it zoned from, from you know, I, I, I guess you could put two houses over there, uh, but it's uh, I'm trying to get it zoned where I can put some apartments. And I have 24 apartments. I'd like to put a carbon copy of what I, not exactly a carbon copy, because I, instead of having a two-story building like I got now, I'd like for them to just be like four one-story buildings. Because I've got some senior citizens that live in my apartments, and it's just easier for them to have a single level instead of going up the steps. And the building that I have now, that is the two-story building, it's all two bedrooms. And so if I change that from uh, all one bedrooms to having at least one building, two bedrooms, then I might not be able to build the three buildings there for, for the apartment. So it may not, I may not be able to get 24 apartments. It may be less than that. But basically, uh, I like the design. Uh, I didn't build the apartments. I, I bought them in 1993. I've owned those things for 26 years. And um, uh, I, by the way, I was raised in East Ridge. And uh, so I've been involved in uh, East Ridge from the time I was little and then on in property for about 44 years I've been involved with the city of East Ridge in one way or another and it's home to me and um, uh, I think most people would tell you um, this gentleman especially that we don't have any trouble over there well the police aren't called over there and I, I know you, I've been hearing stories about terrible things happening in an apartment complex but, but when they're you know, we, we're not new to the area, and they're 26 years. And um, it's a nice little area, I really like it. Uh, and I'd like to have some more rental property uh, on the other side of this little street there. Uh, and then the part that's C2 on towards Ringo Road, uh, one of these days I might want to put some offices or something there. There's not a whole lot of property left there that's, that's uh, it's on C2. Um, and so that's what I'd like to do someday. But right now, I'm not um, trying to get permission to build something right now. What I'm trying to get permission is to get the zoning changed so that I can put something there on that piece of property that's right across the street from where the apartments are. And to get the, the property where my apartments are actually sitting, to get that changed to are free for apartments. Thank you, Mr. Hunter. Anyone have any questions for Mr. Hunter? Mr. Hunter, have you considered doing anything, excuse me, anything just a besides? No, excuse me just a minute. I, I just wanted to mention this, that if you know where this street is, Rebecca Drive, mm -hmm. uh, where the church used to be. Of course, it was in terrible shape. Um, some people would call it an eyesore. Well, it's not there anymore. On the other side of where the church was is the old state place. What was it, a Western citizen? Or? Ryan's. It was it Ryan's? Ryan's, okay. The old state place is there and it's been closed for a long, long time. And there's a parking lot there that's not used. Okay, that's on one side of me. And then on the other side of me, is uh, on the other side of Rebecca Drive behind my apartments there uh, uh, is a church. There's another church over there. And then at the end of the dead end street there, there's a, like a, I think it's a assisted living or, or something like that place at the, at the, where the dead end street mm -hmm. is. So what I'd like to do, I'm sorry for interrupting you, is I'd like to put something that I know how to run. I'd like to put some, some more apartments that I've been very successful um, have running there, and I, and I, I know it, that that dead end street. In a way, you're kind of limited on what you're going to have there. It's 
not good, in my opinion, to have retail down there at the end of that dead end street. It's not visible from the Flamingo Road, and I just I don't think that would that would work. And in a lot of places in East Ridge where you might not want apartments, I happen to think this is a good little old area right here for them. But again, I'm not building something right now. And I'm, uh, but I would like to get it prepared so that down the road, when I save some money, I can build some. Okay. I, I have, my question was, have you considered doing anything other than building more apartments on this property? Uh, I, like, I like to say, I have looked into the possibility of putting some offices, but I just don't think, some, I'm talking small. You know, like you'd say, a FedEx place where you go get copies made and you, you know, that kind of thing, or, or something small like that, which would go to the R, the C2 part, I understand. But, um, no, I, I, uh, I, I know the apartment business, I know the rental business, and uh, I'd like to stick with something that I know something about. So what about just build single family homes and sell them? Well, I don't think I could put, it, there's not very much room there uh, on that piece of property. There's not very much room at all. I think I could put, if I wanted to put a single family home, uh, I think a two, something like that. But I, you know, I think, in my opinion, having something that is the same thing as something that's already there would work better. That's just my opinion. You know, my, my dear old dad used to say, he had a saying that I use sometimes, and it goes, big toe, little toe, that's all I know. So I don't, you know, I'm not an expert. This is the first time I have ever asked for anything to be solved. So I don't know the correct procedures, you know, so. Do you know a lot about the Board of Regents Act? No, sir. Board of Regents? I don't have time to not to explain. Well, please see me afterwards. I can explain to you. Okay. Yeah, I know it's a good piece of property. You should, you should, should really get educated on the Board of Regents Act sure. right, and what all it tells because of, sure. uh, since this property is in the Board of Regents, you're eligible for, uh, Mr. Miller. Okay. You're eligible for financial incentives, but only for retail development to generate sales tax on the seven cents. Uh, I mean, it's paid to the state, the city gets back 4.12 cents. Mm -hmm. Negotiate how much of that you can get. So I wouldn't want to put retail where nobody's yeah, see, it, interested. It, it, it's the office buildings, it doesn't. It's yeah. got to have retail yeah. sales. It's got to have sales to generate Does it? the sales tax that we get remitted back from the state. Right. And, the, and the depth of each one of those lots over there across the street. Each hour. It's, yes. I know. I, I was over there the other day. Yes. I was walking through the complexes. And that would cause. It's very well run. It's very well run complex. Well, thank you. I've talked to some of the people there and they seem to enjoy it. Just as a commentary, since I think I'll have to abstain from this vote, these two plots next door are about to become the world's largest public power sports dealership. Yeah, that's not. That's not. That's not his property. He's not rezoning it. He's reselling these two right here, right? The adjoining, the ones that are circled in the things. There's two different requests. There's a request to rezone the split zone, which you know I hate split zones. There's also a request to rezone the existing R1 to allow future development, which would adjoin the property that I represent. Yeah, but it's not, it's not property that you represent. Okay, it's so, next door to it. right, next door. So it's okay, I don't have to abstain from it. I don't okay. see where, okay. Again, big toe, little toe. That's yeah. No, I would we're trying to keep it a, a very, very nice place, and I have got the luxury of being able to tell you folks that I've been running this thing and owning this thing for a long, long time, and we've kept it up, uh, and uh, um, it's a nice place to live. I've had folks that live there, you know, uh, tell me how, like, how much they like it, because I've been here for a long, long time. You know, like I said earlier, sometimes when you have a house, you got your kids, like I had at one time, and and then you get a little older and you want to downsize and you don't want to take care of the yard or that kind of thing. There's a place for for apartments, you know, as long as it's not in somebody's neighborhood and I'm not, and so 
flooded neighborhood. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hunter. Anybody else have anything else for Mr. Hunter or Mr. Howell? Yeah, I have a question. Okay. Uh, as I understand, actually, we're talking about two separate things here, aren't we? Right. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, the property across the street from you, which where your apartments are, is R1 now, right? You want to go to R3, that's correct? Yes. Uh -huh. And across the street, that's commercial? No, it doesn't. That's R1. That's R1. Well, across the street is, that property that I bought across the street is R1 until you get up even with the end of my apartment property. And then the rest of it from there to the Hibachi restaurant is C2. Right. Okay. And I'm not doing anything about that. I'm just dealing with the part that's across the street from the apartments. So the, the apartments that he owns now, just on the west side of Rebecca. Yeah, just need to be Rezone. properly zoned. Properly yeah. zoned, so right. yeah. so it reflects uh, what is constructed on this property. Right. By the way, can I ask you all a question? Is how in the world did that get zoned to R1? There was a blanket rezoning in 1989, and for some reason they painted it just down the road across lot lines, and we have a million plots here in East Ridge, there's on two different things, the splits on property. We don't know why. We didn't have a planning commission, I don't think, back then. We do now, and we're trying to fix them one at a time. Um, and this one is obviously a mistake. They rezoned the later property, the end of Rebecca Drive in 04, to make an office, but it had all been R1 during that time. And they just said R1 through here, and it included existing apartments, unfortunately. I want to have an open public hearing. Does anybody have any other questions right now for Mr. Hunter? Okay, uh, at, at this time I'll go ahead and open a public hearing. I'll let the, the residents come down one by one and uh, speak into the microphone. State your name and your address for the record, please. Uh, where Ryan's is now, mm -hmm. that's also, what's that going to be? We know it's so. So I think, I think the Ryan's is going to be the new Honda Motor Power Sports sort of building. Sorry. Something like that. Sort of. So that'll be the parking uh, for it. The, what had been East Ridge Motors will become Southern Honda Power Sports. Taking in where the local coffee shop is, all that too? Correct. And expanding it significantly. Thank you, ma'am. Anybody else? Charles McCullough, 1214 Reeves. Um, I've been in front of the uh, city council a few times, so I'm sure most of y'all know how to go to an apartment. Um, we're already the densest city in the state. We've already got 50% rental apartments. We don't need more apartments. Especially not, uh, I mean, East Ridge as a whole is dense. This particular area is also dense. And then a uh, uh, 200 yard radius, you've also got uh, Kimberly Apartments in East Ridge Village. Um, the uh, the uh, lot across the street, the regular R1 lot, is also 90 yards away from the floodplain, which uh, sort of means, oh, I don't have to do anything. It, but it's going to flood eventually. It was all rain, but that means it's going to flood. Um, I mean, really, with as dense as we are already, we, don't, we really don't need any more housing. If we have to build housing, uh, it's already all one. There's room for single family homes. I, I sort of agree with you. We need more businesses, maybe less housing, given that we're so dense. We've got like 2,500 people square mile or something. Um, and as far as the uh, as far as the history of the parcel, I'm sure most of y'all remember uh, last year Mr. Hunter bought this to keep it away from the uh, animal shelter, so that uh, to keep us in a building that floods all the time. Um, and then turn around and ask the same city which pulled the rug out from under, hey, help me make a bunch of money off this same purchase. Uh, I mean, I've got a bunch of words for that, but I don't want to end up that big talk about that second. That's all about. All right. Thank you, Mr. McCall.
Lauderman is 21 and Brittany Brown Road. We only have so much we are And I cannot, especially after the first hour, we're going to approve some more apartments after what we just put the last guy through. And you're going to approve him. He doesn't even have any drawings. I'd like to see pictures of what the inside of this place is right, right now look like. I really, before he builds anything else or gets rezoned to do that, I'd like to know what the conditions of his existing are. Because I, I kind of feel like he's just going to do what's past him, you know, what's got him in the past. And I just, you know, like I said, we can't get that land back. Feel like the, you know, yeah, I agree. We don't. We only yeah. have so much uh, border region property in, in the city. Thank you. Thank you, Smith. Anyone else? John Kenoki, K N O K E, fifteen oh seven Rebecca Drive. Um, so he didn't want the animal shelter there for traffic reasons, but adding more apartments is going to increase traffic anyway um, with the Mexican or sorry Hispanic grocery that's in that I think is the old bank yes. they come down our street flying to cut through to get in there so traffic is increased already there and it's a very narrow road so it's hard to two cars go in both directions you know and we have a tree that overhangs and kind of have to go around it to go down the road. So traffic is my concern there. Also, that land is a little higher than the current apartments, so water runoff would be a concern that I have also, because when it does rain, it floods all the way down the street to the, um, to the dumpster back there. So if you have to throw your trash away, you're wading through like basically a small river. So those were my concerns. Okay, thank you, sir. Anyone else? I see no one, so I'm going to close this public hearing. And before I entertain a motion, I just want to make sure, does anyone have any other questions for Mr. Hunter, Mr. Howe? Uh, no one? Okay. Um, Yes. Mission member Mallard? Yes. Mission member Spence? Yes. 
Commission Member Tuggle. Yes. Chairperson Johnson. Yes. Okay, now we got a different matter of uh, 1514, 1520, and 1524, which is the, the three vacant lots. Do I hear a motion? regards to that rezoning request. I'd like to make a motion that we deny the request to change that from R1, but would encourage him to look at that front must piece and consider a change to R2 or to C2, but deny the request from R1 to R3. Got a motion to deny. Second. Got a second. Any questions? And roll call, please. Vice Chairperson Rainier. Yes. Commission Member Miller? Yes. Commission Member Spence? Yes. Commission Member Tuckle? Yes. Chairperson Johnson? Yes. Mr. Hunter, that rezoning request was denied. You do have the right to take it to council for final approval, if you wish. I would suggest, this is me, was to maybe look into the Board of Regions Act and educate yourself a little bit on that and maybe find uh, some more. Maybe some more appropriate use for that property. Do you think C2 would work all the way down? That piece that is connected to the church that would be an obvious split zone and would absolutely, I think we, everybody would approve that being C2 since that's a split zone. Going on down to the, the, the dead end. Right. Um, now, for the pieces behind it, I mean, that would be an RPA change because those are separate plats, but the one that's in the front is a split zone that goes right to the middle of the building. Yeah, if it was it's still there. Right, sure. So what do you think about what I'm asking is what do you think about where the C2 line is now? And, and it's R1, what it is now going down on that side of the street. Uh, what do you think uh, the chances of instead of doing R1 that I would try to get a chance to C2 all the way down to the end of the street? Uh, I don't think we can say that. Yeah, I don't think I'm we not. Have, are allowed to, but if you want to chat with me or Mr. Miller afterwards, we can explain the Board of Region Program. Okay. Might help you make a decision. Either one of us, I'm sure, be happy to chat with you personally. Okay. And that would be only for C2, though, right? Right. Well, commercial, not C2, but commercial. What's commercial? C1 through 4. C1 through 4. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. And again, I think Mr. Custer, he's not here. Mr. Custer is really good at yeah, explaining your option. And he's probably your best option. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Mr. Hunter. Okay, that's all the items on the agenda tonight. Thank you all for coming out, and uh, this meeting is adjourned.